What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh Makuga, we're live, guys. We are live. This is the week of TV Talk. It will be the hands down greatest week of your life. This, I promise you, unless like you're on your honeymoon or something, I, I can't compete with that. What I can compete with is all of the TV we are going to talk this week. We got a lot of fun stuff planned. If we don't talk about it today, think about this. You can just tune back in tomorrow. We'll probably talk about it then, or Wednesday, or whoever. We got a lot of fun guests, games. We got an end credits thing we're doing here. Sinead is not here, shockingly. She didn't make it on time, but she will be here. <laughs> but joining me as always is my best bud, David Griffin. What's up, buddy? What's happening? I am wearing my uh, dad shirt. Yes. It's, it's not my dad shirt, but I wanted to feel like my dad, so I'm wearing some Tommy Bahama. I was going to say, and it feels Bahama. so good on the skin. Yeah, you, you it feels look incredible. Like you're, you're ready for like a nice vacation. Yeah, I'm like ready to go to the a, beach. I'm ready. Drink. Yeah. He's fra straight out of Orlando, four months later, <laughs> still wearing the Tommy Bahama. And Emma Fife is here. Hello. Emma, yeah. so excited. I'm excited to be here. It's, you know, eight in the morning, yeah. uh, our time. Mm -hmm. And what a, what better way to kick off your day than by talking about and For our Australian the fans who are watching at 1 a.m., we thank you. I, yes. know it's, I know it's late out there in Australia. I appreciate yes. that. Yes, and Chug apparently it's 4 o'clock p.m. GMT, which is like Greenwich. Meantime. Meantime, yeah. Mm -hmm. I looked that up for somebody who asked me. Somebody's uh, awake right for now. For fans in Ireland. And, so. Emma, <laughs> Emma Fife went to college. So I she did. Knows. I did go to college. <laughs> the GMT is Greenwich <laughs> Meantime. All right, let's get into this. Uh, guys, at the end of the show, instead of pick of the week, I know you guys like when I scream pick of the week, uh, each day we're going to do an end credit. So we're calling end credit. So Sinead DeFreeze is going to pick a winner. And we get 30 seconds to talk about whatever we want. 30 seconds to change the TV world or just talk about Peaky Blinders. Who knows? <laughs> um, okay, so big news story. The first one, and I think probably the more fun things, is that Mike Myers is coming back to TV. He's going to host the gong show as a dude named Tommy Maitland. There he is. Look at that guy. There's Tommy <laughs> Maitland, all makeup out. Mike Myers coming back to TV. Now listen. For me, I don't watch the match game. Do you watch the match game? Like I do Alec not. Bonin? No. You watch the match I game? have not seen there, but I used to watch old school match game on Game Show Network there a you lot. Go. <laughs> I'm more of a Price is Right kind of guy. Okay. Price is All Right. right. Yeah. There you All go. Right. That's fair. Uh, you know, you've got uh, you've got the the Hollywood game night. You've got all mm -hmm. these kind of things. Am I a fan of those shows? Sure. I mean, I watch them when they come on. I know yeah. uh, Thad in the back just gave us a big thumbs up with Alec Baldwin in the match game, uh, but he's married, so he has to watch that kind of stuff. <laughs> so. But I think the reason why I like this is like, okay, Gong Show comes back, it's Mike Myers, like, uh, the last thing we saw him in was Love Guru, which mm -hmm. was a love poo-poo. And I think this is hysterical. I think that Mike Myers coming back in the thing, I can't wait to see what he does. He's like an improv guy from England. This, yeah. This is, what do you think, Emma? Well, and I mean, because I, 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 rem I have like vague memories of watching reruns of the Gong Show, so... To me, I mean, this is this is the perfect vehicle for Mike Myers to do something like this because it is this sort of weird variety show, and it and it not only provides him with the opportunity to play this ridiculous character, but also you can bring in other celebrities that yeah. just get to do like weird stuff. Yeah, and I think with with the the celebrities that they have on there, there's a lot of those. I mean, what I can't imagine what Zach Galifianakis is going to do. I on cannot, there. Wait. <laughs> right? cannot wait. Right? What do you think, Dave? I'm excited because Mike Myers is a chameleon. You can kind of do anything you want. You can do Austin Powers. Mm -hmm. You can put him in Inglorious Bastards, and he's going to fit. You can put him as this game show host, mm -hmm. you know, going over the top, method actor style yeah. character, and he's just going to be fantastic. He's always good yeah. at whatever he's in. So I'm excited. I don't watch a lot of game shows or, you know, those type of series. You know but my passion I, I would for watch Jeopardy. It. I know you love Jeopardy. Yes. Yeah. I know that's your lifelong dream is to be in a Jeopardy, so yeah. maybe it should be your chance. Maybe they'll have auditions. You can be in the gong show. What? That could happen. So my talent on the gong show, I don't get gonged, is I come out and I ask trivia questions. Yeah. <laughs> That's my talent on the gong the show. The greatest but trivia we'll mind of our it. time. We'll <laughs> uh, all right, next up, uh, Roseanne. Uh, this this makes sense. I mean, you could kind of see this. Uh, what's her name? Sarah Gilbert, she does the talk. So she's in, you know, she's in the public mm -hmm. eye. Roseanne's still funny. She crushed on... Uh, one of those um, Comedy Central roasts a while back. Mm -hmm. John Goodman, I mean, the dude seems to be in everything anyway, so mm -hmm. throw him in there. They're doing all of these shows that are like reboot reunions. You know, they did Fuller House, which is what it is. Uh, so <laughs> I, what do you think? Do you think they should have done this or we'd leave Roseanne, a beautiful series that what, my parents wouldn't let me watch, so I had to hide watch it. My mom hated Roseanne Barr after, after she butchered the national anthem. She said, and grabbed her crotch yeah. after singing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Mm, my mom yeah. was not a fan. Yeah. I'm sure Mrs. Griffin was. Mrs. Griffin but. was not a fan of Roseanne after yeah. that. I am not the biggest fan of Roseanne myself. I mm -hmm. love John Goodman. Yeah. It's one yeah. of my favorite actors. Is still one of my favorite actors. Um, I'm not that excited about this, okay. honestly. I just don't I think maybe they should just let it rest. Yeah. Yeah. The Full House didn't do well. We talked about this last it's week. It's still about, on TV. I know. It's still going. People are watching it. They keep doing more seasons. 
you do something like we talked about last week, like with Curb Your Enthusiasm, you sneak a little Seinfeld reunion episode in there like mm -hmm. that. If it was on like a sketch show like that, I think yeah. it could be cool. Sure. But as a full series, I just don't know if this could work. I just, I feel like, again, it's like you were saying, Josh, like I feel like I'm not surprised about this. Mm -hmm. And to me, this does seem like prime Netflix territory. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's what they're doing. They're like, oh, people liked the show 20 years ago. Let's see what these characters are doing 20 years later because right. that's what people want to see. But do they really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. You know? We'll find yeah. out. Because, <laughs> I mean, the, I think the nice thing about Roseanne was at a time it was it was discussing blue collar. Mm. You yeah. know, it was it was a really cool look at a 90s family that wasn't your typical sitcom, like sure, all sure. roses and flowers. Yeah. Right? It, yeah it also, was like married real. with children, too. Was that before? Oh, Mary told was us way, well before. Way before, yeah. yeah. You had Rose those kind of... I think I was watching more like the Cosby show, yeah. Family Matters, The Waltons. Mm -hmm. I like the good wholesome <laughs> TV shows. Oh, this wasn't very wholesome. <laughs> this is not a wholesome show. <laughs> he gets, I like, he I like gets his Walton zinger in there one more time. <laughs> uh. It's here for John Boy over here. John Boy Griffin. Uh, yeah, I, I, again, I think they're... Like, you mentioned Seinfeld. Obviously, yeah. I would love to see a Seinfeld reunion. Yeah. I don't know it's, if my life is going to be ruined if they never do one. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Jason Alexander is wearing a toupee now, so whatever is on the wall, there he can do whatever uh roseanne i guess we'll see a lot of people are yelling at us to talk about the house of cards trailer season five mm. i'm not i don't watch that show i i also i actually was just uh discussing sort of my feelings about house of cards that yeah. i have the same sort of reservations about it that oddly i did about girl boss when we talked about it last yeah. week which is that you have these characters that make these awful choices and are awful to other people and you're supposed to still like them, yeah. um, whereas it's not like in Breaking Bad where when Walter White does terrible things, you're supposed to be like, oh, what's wrong with you? Right. Yes. Uh, so I, I, I've I, never really gravitated towards House of Cards that there much you go. myself. I stopped after, after season three. I was like, okay. I get it. Yeah, this I think people this. always ask us, like, are there shows that you liked at first and kind of gave up on? Yeah. I think for me, House of Cards is one of those. Robin Wright kills it. You know, Kevin Spacey. Oh, yeah, she's brilliant. The, the acting is incredible, but just after you get to a certain point, after three or yeah. four seasons of seeing the same thing over and over, it's like, okay, that's enough. Like, I get it. I get it. They're bad people. You know, for They're the, bad people. For the last year, I've seen one face over and over, and it never gets old, and that is one Sinead DeFries. <laughs> hey. She's here. Hey. She hey. made it. Hey. There she is. <laughs> Hi, guys. That How's Monday going? morning traffic is just the worst. <laughs> Real quick, Sinead. Yeah. Fresh off your trip to South Africa, oh, you yeah. didn't get attacked by a baboon. I your friend did, you, but but yeah. your friend did. Yeah, Aaron did, Robbins got attacked by a baboon. Yeah, well, I mean, she got bitch slapped by a baboon. <laughs> 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 he didn't attack her. She he went for her bag. She put it down. He he went for it. Her first instinct was to grab the bag back. And being from South Africa, it's the one rule. Once they have anything of yours. You just let him have it. What? Really? Well, they, yeah. Did so they he sell took it back out, to you. He took out a thousand bucks out of her pocket and was just like looking at us with it <laughs> like this. And Who I was like, a thousand dollars in your pocket. <laughs> a thousand, is she a, a thousand, a thousand rand. We uh, went to the currency exchange, yeah. you know. Oh, so it, you it. you can exchange a hundred yes. bucks, and that's a thousand rand. Yeah. No, I think um, and he just threw her money all over this. Like it was, it was honestly epic. And the greatest thing ever is like, I had the vlog camera recording and forgot that I was recording it. <laughs> So we were like looking through the footage after she went to the medical tent, and I was like, "Oh my god, I have this all oh, on camera." Oh, that Incredible. is so good. Talk about good pretty TV. Fun, pretty fun. <laughs> so we are at the point of the show, everybody's favorite moment, uh, superhero rundown, which you Ooh. made just in time oh, to talk about our favorite show, Agents of Shield. Agents of Shield. Which I gotta tell <clears> you, <throat> this week, I'm really starting to feel bad for Ward. I yeah. am like, I want him to be in the the other world as like this Ward. Right, because I missed him on the show. Now you like kind of see it. he's got that that glint in his eye, like Daisy. You know, don't forget about me. Give me a little Breakfast Club, you know, yeah. kind of a thing. Uh, and uh, the whole Fitz and his dad dynamic, uh -huh. uh, David O'Hara from from Braveheart. It, it's I, I, this other world. I'm starting to become a fan of this world. I know it's crazy because I had a slight feeling that yeah. this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like when when we first got the kind of the background of this world. And I was like, oh, this is weird. And like, they need to get out. But they played it in such a way that I knew, I knew I was going to feel bad for Ward because yeah. there was a part of me that was really excited to see him. Mm -hmm. um, and I just don't know like where they go now. But I think Fitz to me is one of my favorite characters of the entire season. Yeah, he's, he's crushing it. This is it. his season to yeah. like shine. Yeah. Because really and truly, the last couple seasons, he's just been a patsy. Like right. And like he kept things kept form. happening to yeah, him, you know? Yeah. And like there was that one moment where there's like eight episodes where literally he was like 
stupid. Yes. Like, for lack of a better word, like, he was dealing with stuff first, and then it kind of turned into, like, he was very slow and couldn't catch up. It's like when you order, he would, like, order a meal, and instead of giving him the meal, they just, like, bring it and put it on his head. Yeah, it was sad. It was brutal. And now I feel like this is his moment to shine. Yeah. We've seen, like, him be such a badass. I'm so really excited about it. Do you think, it. I've, I've asked you this, now as we trending, do you think that they make mm -hmm. it out of this the framework this season are they still in the framework when we season finale i think they'll get out of the framework in the season finale yeah and do you think throw up a spoiler alert here real quick do you think the patriot is alive and comes out of there mm. do you think that that was like do you think he's actually dead or do you think he comes back i want to say he comes back yeah just because i feel like we're, we're on network tv so them killing off a major star right isn't you know apropos per se I want to say he comes back, but okay. I, I honestly wouldn't be mad about it. Okay. I think it would be really like hard hitting yeah. if that's just the reality. Because our patriot now is Phil Coulson, yeah. crushing it at that end broadcast. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to a place where when they go to another world, I really don't give a crap, and that's the Flash. Oh, it's the future, Josh. Oh, it's man. the future. It's the future. Future Barry Allen has the same haircut <laughs> as Carl in The Walking Dead, and it pisses me <laughs> off, and I know Dennis oh, hates no. it too, because Dennis and I hate oh. Coral, and then Coral, Coral. Oh. <laughs> Dennis, give me a coral. <laughs> uh, I wish future Barry Allen had just also worn that cowboy hat. Yes, like, yeah. to you know, fully complete this, the this look. This was funny. When you, okay, if someone dies in your life, you're like, oh, I don't care about life. I'm going to let my hair grow out. Why does he have no facial hair? I, yeah. He's perfectly yes, clean shaven, yes. so he's shaving it's every day. It's the same thing that always bothers me about Tarzan. It. Like, you're living in the woods, with a, in the jungle, with a bunch of gorillas. Why are you clean shaven? Where's that Mach 3 store? Where is yeah. this store? Where are they getting the Gillette from? Where's that going like, Is he on? getting a stone shave like that? Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> perfect. Uh, but future, uh, future Barry at Barry Allen, as they were calling him on Twitter this week, emo Barry Allen. Yeah. He had two strands of hair that just sat. He, right he, he, in he his doesn't hand. care anymore. I just don't care about life anymore. I don't yeah. Care. I don't care. I couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> honestly. I couldn't get past the hair because I was like, dude, just just move it. How do you yeah, just, just, just like just brush it, it out of your face, a little bit of hair He's gel. Like, it's gonna be okay. Go like this. <laughs> like I don't know what you're supposed to do here, Barry Allen. Uh, and everybody's just listen. <laughs> At this point, who cares who Savitar is? <laughs> <laughs> Savitar could come on and it's Joe. And we're like, what? <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Joe Savitar. It's like, it's become the gong show of villains. You're like, Savitar, who gives a crap? Yeah. Uh, what are yeah, you guys feeling? I, I mean, I, I'm sort of with you. Like, this episode to me just felt like it was kind of all over the place. And I, I'm with you, Josh. Like, I don't, I don't care who Savitar is anymore. Don't, yeah. Well, I just don't. I, I, all right, I get it's time travel. So when, you, when we're talking about time travel, you have to kind of, you yes. know, suspend right. belief. You know, you have to kind of just let it go. Sure. But Killer Frost is on a rampage yeah. and, start, you know, messing up Central City. He's like, you know what? I'm going to go to the future right now. Yeah. He's like, now? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, but when I come back, it'll be the exact same time. Oh, that's okay. Go ahead and just go. Sure. Yeah. It's like, yeah. What are you doing? Well, I mean, you got Wally, you and, then yeah. we, and then we go to Wally in the future, and he's a catatonic dude. <laughs> <He's just, laughs> come on. Just laying around. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, all all oh, over the man. death of Iris. I mean, listen, I, I know people love Iris, and they have this whole thing, but seven years later, Barry still hasn't gotten it together, right? Cisco's like, hey, man, come on, help out. He's like, nah, I'm good. I know, Cisco kind of like a homeless person, like just li <laughs> like he's just living in the lab by himself. Yeah. And it's just, it's messed up. The lab's still very clean. Yep, doesn't very, matter. very clean. I know, that's the thing is like the lab is very clean, but like Barry doesn't care about no, life. No. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's not good. We're 19 hours into the season. We still have four more hours left. And I'm just at a point like, and the guy got out of the suit. We don't know who it is, guy or girl. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know if I care. I, I think care. at this point, we're basically Savitar deal or no deal. You're like, yeah. Ooh, seven. Mm -hmm. Not Savitar. <laughs> All right. Next episode. Uh, let's talk yeah. Arrow because this, now this is, we're, we're, I know we've said it all season, but we're at the point now where uh, Arrow is kind of just knocking it out of the park here mm -hmm. um, because this episode, we, we didn't really get any Russian stuff and we haven't seen... Um, I, I think I missed Prometheus in this episode. Yeah. It was solid, mm -hmm. but it missed no Russian flashbacks, which are always awesome, right. and no Prometheus. And that guy's been tearing it up this season. And you could totally see... You want to throw a spoiler up, alert up there? Thanks, Cody. Uh, you could totally see that the... Uh, I, what's that hacker organization called? What are they calling it? Oh, uh, 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 Helix. Helix, yes. Mm -hmm. You could totally see Helix turning on... Felicity. Oh, like, that 100%. Was a mile 100%. Away. Yeah. And the fact she was like, why'd you do that? You're like, 
Hey, hey, dummy. I just don't. We I don't all like, know how this works. I don't like how they're ganging up on Felicity. It's yes, like, it's that, like, oh, you're, you you crossed the line. I'm like, you guys cannot talk about crossing the line. Yeah. You guys have killed so many people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Diggle's just shooting guys left and right. You know, it's like you can't get on Felicity for that. Yeah, I agree. I I feel like I. I it's one of those things where it's kind of this double-edged sword of like, I'm glad that Felicity is participating because sure. for a little while there- She gets there, a participation trophy. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, go, for a little while there, yeah. I felt like she was kind of getting pushed to the side. So yes. like, I'm glad to see her back playing an active role in the story. But like, I, I kind of agree with you though, with the like how you can't be like, you've crossed the line because yes. you're all, you you all cross the line on the regular. Yeah. Right. And I, at this point, the arrow crew is, he's got a bow and arrow. Everybody else just has guns. Yeah. Like they're not superheroes. They are, just dudes flashing guns. It's basically out there. like a Punisher series now. <laughs> it's like yeah. the Punisher with less blood. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of yeah, I'm kind of into it. Um, let's move on to Our Lady Supergirl. Now tonight we get a brand new Supergirl, yeah. which means tomorrow we're going to talk about the fresh Supergirl because we're a week off of this. Yes. Um, is, I, maybe I'm alone on this one, but I got a serious crush on Lena Luther. Yeah, oh, can, can, no, can, she's can, awesome. Can we talk right. about Katie McGrath for just yeah, a little bit? Just go ahead, David. She is a, a wonderful young lady. Can Dennis we get and some I. Music? Can we get yeah, like some music? Yeah, some like, uh, <laughs> so music that's not copyright. For, uh, uh, Dennis and I got to interview her a few years back. She was on a show called Merlin. Mm. It's a BBC oh, series. Right. And she played Morgana. Wait a second. I forgot a second. that she was yeah, on that show. She played show. Morgana. Yeah. David is watching a fantasy British series. <laughs> Stop the presses, guys. <laughs> Stop the so, live show. I, I think I, I love her relationship uh, you know, with Supergirl. They're, they're, they mm -hmm. They have great chemistry together. Yeah, I, I, I'm really enjoying that friendship. Like, I, mm -hmm. I always love seeing really great female friendships portrayed in fiction, and I'm really enjoying this one. And I loved that, uh, I guess, spoilers, uh, after... Uh, Kara and Monel like crash her dinner because she had called Kara to be like, don't don't let me go to dinner with my ex boyfriend. But mm -hmm. Kara missed the call, yeah. and so then she and Monel just like show up where she and and her ex uh, who runs the company with the nanobots are having dinner. The, I was just gonna say we it's have, Baymax. Yeah, we yeah, have to do the, We have to mention the crossover. This is an iZombie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Supergirl yeah, yeah, yeah. crossover. Yeah. I got the actor from iZombie. Um, but like I, that but what I really liked was that afterwards, uh, when Kara shows up the next day, that. Like, Lena's annoyed with her, but yeah. she's not like, how dare you? Like, they don't mm -hmm. really fight about it. She's just like, that was weird. Never do that again. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys ever been on a date where, like, friends show up to save you? That's like, never <laughs> happened. Never yeah. happened. I think that uh, happened to me once. I feel even... like I've been the Kara in this situation. <laughs> oh, so you've gone to rescue friends. Yeah. Sinead, yeah. give me something on that. Have you ever had, like, a friend or Kel.co come and be like, get off this date. You need to... Bail, bail, abort. Do you have um, like well, an I've had text? people, I've had people call me before and pretend to be like yeah, an yeah. emergency. Mm -hmm. And one time, I texted my friend. And I was like, "You need to get me out of this." <laughs> and she called me like frantically, screaming like, "I broke my leg!" Like as a joke. And then I was like, "Oh my gosh, okay, all right, I'm coming." Yeah, I think most guys know like. We're going straight downhill on this one if she gets Yeah, a phone now call, I just don't care. Now I'm just like, ah, dude, yeah. I gotta go. <laughs> I think a lot of girls in the comments are asking how is David Griffin still single. Yeah. We'll get to that later in the show. <laughs> is that really in the comments right now? <laughs> oh, it's man. always oh, in the man. comments. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> You're no. the best. You no, are the best. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to talk about something that I think is the oh. absolute best. The best of last week. It's my pick of the week. <laughs> You're what, Josh? You're what? My <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Left the uh, the American Gods is unbelievable. I just called it the American the Gods. American Gods. Yeah. The, 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 American. <laughs> the American Gods. American Gods uh, is everything that I hoped it would be. I was like an idiot. I I went to this suit exchange. It was sort of like a sample sale for men, and it was a total botch. But I was talking to a dude in line. He's like, "Have you seen this American God show?" He was like, "He's a talent agent." I, he was like, "It's the greatest TV show I've seen in five years." Mm. I was like, let's not jump ahead. Peaky Blinders is still out there, but uh, that's my <laughs> second Peaky Blinders reference of the show. Um, <laughs> American Gods was unbelievable. Yeah. The scene, the opening scene with the Vikings when he gets shot with those arrows, is maybe. Like, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Movie, TV, it was unbelievable. Yeah, I, I thought that opening scene with the Vikings was so incredibly effective of just kind of, like, setting up the whole idea of the series and that it's, like, belief is what keeps these various figures in their godlike status. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, just the whole thing where it's, like, you know, obviously, you know, the guy gets murdered right away and they're, like, oh, no, the wind's not happening. We got to, like, pray to our god. And so they, like, build the idol of him basically out of the wood. And then they're like, nope, wait, he's a war god, so we're all going to murder each other until, you know, Odin basically notices us yeah. and, you know, sends us back to the land from whence we came. I love the idea that they're like, stuff's not going well on this island, time to kill each other. 
Like mm-hmm. it's it's Lord of the Flies, but with axes. It's yeah, well, super, well, super it's bloody. because they 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 one hundred percent believe that that is how they are going to receive favor from their God in order yeah. to return home, and they're right. Yeah, you know, it, it's like the whole thing uh, with with Wednesday uh, when Shadow, you know, encounters him in first class on the plane, and they're flying back to where Shadow was from, and. Wednesday's whole sort of thing about uh, how airplanes should be impossible Mm -hmm. and how is it Newton that's keeping this airplane in the air or is it all the people on the plane who believe that this plane is able to fly Mm -hmm. through the air and safely get us to a destination? Is it faith or science? Yeah. Yeah. That's a big debate. Perfect for you. It's Mm -hmm. such a good book. Being the seminarian that you are. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I got some great shows, American Gods, I have leftovers, all this theology flying around my head. It's awesome. Yeah. What did you think of this? I thought, and again, I've seen the first four episodes. Of course, I won't spoil anything. Um, I I, I went ahead. I'm sorry. Josh had the screeners too. He watched one. I had to watch all of them. They were just, they were so good. So (laughs) the first four episodes are awesome. So just keep watching. It gets better and better. If you've seen that kind of blood splatter before, like that blood looks familiar. That's because David Slade directed the pilot, uh, also did Hannibal. So the blood looks, and also you have Brian Fuller who's writing, does a great job with that. Yeah. All the characters are very well done. I'm really impressed with Ricky Whittle. I watched, yeah. you know, The Hundred on the CW. Great show. I heard he was going to be the lead in this. I'm like, okay, he's good in The Hundred, but can he carry a show along with guys like Ian McShane? He looks incredible. He's fantastic. Yeah. Carries himself all the good looking man. He's a good looking dude. That interaction when he meets uh, Pablo Schreiber's character, who yeah. is uh, Leo Schreiber's half brother. He's a leprechaun. You know, a tall awesome. leprechaun, a six foot five leprechaun. Yeah. They meet in that alligator bar. Everything's just so well done. The the world they've created, the sets. I mean, it's just it's beautiful to look at. I was talking. Yeah. My, I told my brother to watch it. Right. So yeah. he, he texted me. He's like, I've flown in first class a few times. Eh, that doesn't that, that doesn't happen in first class. Like no. Ian McShane doesn't show up. No, you don't have a guy like Ian McShane. <laughs> no. But he is Mr. Wednesday, so he's yeah. he's got some powers. Yeah. yeah. What did you think of it, Janine? Um, I really liked it. And granted, this was. I watched this after two episodes of The Leftovers because okay. I Ooh. left last Friday. Yeah, two episodes yeah, yeah. of Le- Leftovers, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Pretty Little Liars, and I thought <laughs> I was going to die. Um, but I decided to watch it still. And um, I was on the verge of falling asleep when I started, and I just okay. couldn't. Like, I watched the entire thing with my eyes, like, peeled. Yeah. Um, but the thing I loved the most about it was... The acting is so good. I felt it's one of those shows where, remember when we were watching Atlanta, we were like, damn, like, how is it every single person that comes on screen, like, is good? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, That's what I really liked about the show. Even the, even the, it would, I guess, be his, was it his wife's sister? Or was it? Yeah, that scene at the graveyard, yeah. The scene at the graveyard was unbelievable. I mean, it was like the reverse MacGruber. (laughs) Yeah, her, like, drunken rants to crying. Yeah, she was awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah, she was really fantastic. Mm, And, And I think that that, as you were saying, Sinead, about like just the look of the show, it was so unique and and you just you get the sense that you're in sort of this tapestry of like fiction and belief. And it, it just again, like Brian Fuller does such incredibly creative stuff. Yeah. Like I loved Pushing Daisies. I loved Dead Like Me. I loved Hannibal. So I, this just feels like the best of all of them. That should get you worried. The fact that he's not on Star Trek, Brian Fuller. That. Oh, Star Trek, that's going to be awful. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to put down the series. He, 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 he gave up on that a little while it's, ago. It's yeah. just, they, they just recast somebody. Like, they changed, somebody was supposed to play a captain, and now they're like a clean out, or they were a clean out, they're a captain. Like, that's just the nightmare. They didn't make a documentary on the making of Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be horrible. I'm sorry. I don't want to anyway, put that down. Anyway, keep going. Um, also, going to talk about the scene. I'll put a little spoiler alert. I don't want to spoil anything too big, but. Um, I'm never going on a dating app again. <laughs> you know, I, I tried to match.com. I tried to Tinder out. I think I'm going to maybe stay off of that, though, because if you go to a bar and meet a woman like that one guy met, I mean, I don't, that, that's, that's a bad way to go. He, was, he seemed like he was having a good time. Yeah. 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 But, to, but to be devoured and, in that way. And it was really ooh, interesting, too, because I, I felt like with that sex scene, it was extremely graphic. Yet there was something so, so respectful and not pornographic about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. yeah, I just thought it was handled extremely well. I was so curious to see where I it guess was that's what all go. fans of the book were wondering. I guess that was a big topic. Yes, and, yes. Uh, mm. Brian, Brian Fuller and those guys addressed that, saying like, "Hey, everybody asked like, how are we going to do that scene?" And the guys like, "We got to do it like it's written in the book." Yeah. and that's how it's written in the book. I guess that's exactly and, how it's written yeah. in the book. Yeah. And that's the that's the reason why David Griffin is single. We got to it, guys. That, yep, that's why. I made it. It. <laughs> that's why I'm single. He is scared. Yep. I'm scared. Of crazy women. I don't want to be bar. devoured. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I've probably been in that situation. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to The Leftovers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been doing uh, mini reviews here on the show as this final season goes on. Um, I think this show has kind of changed the game in a way that uh, 
when I look at a world that is real but fake, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, I'm starting to believe it. Um, and it, what you know, like the first season, I was like, okay, I don't really know what's happening, mm -hmm. but I love it. Second season was like, I get this. Mm -hmm. Now I get this. And then this season, I'm like, you were again a tapestry of sorts. Yeah. They are like painting this world with the dad now in Australia. This episode, <sighs> I. I I, I want to know what's what he, that that guy meant. Would you kill a baby if it cured cancer and then he lights himself on fire? I want to. We like, might not know. We might we never might know. know yeah. But that scene, although two minutes, yeah. was unbelievably powerful. Yeah, I I mean, what an interesting episode because you know these last couple episodes we've been seeing what's been going on with everybody back in Miracle and trying to figure out like why does everybody seem so happy there? Uh, and then yeah. it, this entire episode was all focused on Kevin Senior and his like adventures through Australia and all that stuff uh, with the tape yeah. of their trip to Niagara Falls. Like, and, and uh, oh, the spoiler alert is up. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> um, when, like, for, like I cried when mm. the uh, tape got ruined. Oh, like, that yeah. was just devastating. Yeah. And it's, it's so interesting because you're like, you know that, like, Kevin's kind of crazy, but... You also like really feel for him, right. and and you're like, what is, what are you about, man? But I sort of want you to succeed. And this is like one of those kind of standalone episodes, you know what I mean? A little mm. bit off of where we currently are mm -hmm. in, in another timeline, but still within the framework of we're still in this world. Like this isn't another like a Barry Allen timeline. Yeah. This is we were kind of wondering where it was, but knowing it was in the present. What did I mean? It's hard to know what's going on because you're not sure. What's real and what's not? We know there's a supernatural element going on. Yeah. I mean, you in season two, you wake up in a hotel room after mm -hmm. you die and you come back to life. I mean, stuff like that can happen. Mm -hmm. But then a year later, three years pass, and now Kevin Jr. is mm -hmm. denying that happens. Mm -hmm. But you have his dad, Kevin Sr., who's embracing that, who actually wants to do something about the apocalypse. Like, like in the beginning of the episode when the cop comes up to him and says, what are you doing? He's like, I'm trying to prevent the apocalypse. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. You know, it's like, what are you doing with your life? I mean, he's believed it so so much in his soul, but it's just like, is he really, is he crazy? Yeah. Or is he right? Again, there's that supernatural element, but not everybody has that. So you just don't know what's going on. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a mind bleep. And Shane, you, <laughs> fresh time. off South Africa, you come home to watch Leftovers. Was it a welcome return to the um, Leftovers? Well, <clears throat> to be honest, I, I, I feel like it's getting better and better every episode, mm -hmm. even though I loved the season premiere too. Yeah. But I am 100% in agreement with David because it's all great and everything, but... I am getting a little bit anxious that I don't know what is what right yeah. now. Like, I don't know what this is. And Leftovers is, has always done a really good job have, by doing these one-off episodes that don't frustrate the hell out of me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, because they do make sense, and there is a bigger picture, and I know we will get there, but I am a little bit anxious because I'm, like, getting invested in this this other world, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know what this other world is or if, if it's real or if it's, like, all... I don't, I don't... I literally have no idea what to believe, and like, I when I see it on the and screen. And I think that's a big point. I yeah. think mm -hmm. that's... Your anxiety towards, this, towards the series finale is 100% justified because mm -hmm. something bad is going to happen. Yeah. We don't know what it is. And it's not gonna. I don't think, and I hope it doesn't end like Sopranos, where it just goes to black. I think we are deserve a little more. I, th I think we're I, feeling what the cast is, or what the characters yeah. are feeling. We're mm -hmm. feeling that anxiety. We don't know who to yeah. trust. I, right. I have a feeling in in terms of the ending of this show, we're gonna get something that is satisfying, mm -hmm. but not conclusive and neatly wrapped up in a little bow. No, 100%. no way. There's no way that they could neatly yeah. wrap up everything. Yeah. Because yeah. realize this is Lindelof's first major show that he's done since Lost that he has complete control over. So, I mean, and he got a lot of backlash. From, I think he left Twitter because of yeah. the end of Lost. People still bugging about that finale. And now <laughs> this is his Shit. show. It's not, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so he's going to end it the way he wants to. And I don't think he cares anymore. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see what he does. I can't imagine being that dude and, you know, like he shows up at a restaurant and waiters and waitresses are just like, I'm going to say something. I'm saying something. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say it. I don't think that much weight should be put on finales. I know they are, but if the yeah. finale is bad, people are like, oh, it just ruined the whole experience. I'm like, really? Every episode that you love before that is ruined by the finale? You can still go back and enjoy those episodes, even if you didn't like the finale. I don't disagree with you, and I still yeah. think the season, the series finale of Seinfeld was good, and I'll take it to the grave. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go to the weekend binge. Uh, a little segment here we're doing. Uh, we're going to try out some new segments all week, guys. So, again, we're here every day this week, so we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, we had two drop. We had Catastrophe, yes. and we had Dear White People. Uh, I <laughs> thought that I didn't, I don't know. I didn't think I was going to like Dear White People as much as I did. I really liked Dear yeah. White People. Yeah, I, to me, I, I was saying this before the show, 
to me, watching Dear White People felt like I felt when I was in college. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's a scene where they go to a theater party. I was a theater major. I was yeah. like, yeah, our parties were this bizarre. <laughs> like, you know, every party had a theme. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, I... I I don't know. I, I really liked it. I thought it did a nice job of, of sort of handling, uh, you know, problematic race relations, mm -hmm. but in a in a sensitive but fun kind of way. Face. Yes, that's exactly what it was. Right? It wasn't heavy handed. Right. It, it didn't feel preachy mm -hmm. uh, or like it had like this really strong message that it wanted to get across. Mm -hmm. It was like, no, we're just going to show you that like this is how it is. Yeah. White people, please do not have blackface parties. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You know? mm. What do you think, Dave? <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think it's a, it's a subject matter that's not talked about often on television because there just aren't as many showrunners doing shows like this. Obviously, the, the, the movie had some success, so they could bring that to a television series. The big thing here is to talk about racism within black culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yes. If you're white, you probably, you maybe you heard of it from friends, but you don't experience it. There's racism within black culture, like black people versus black people. And you see that when they're in the, the black caucus room, there's divisions they're like, hey, there's this group of black people. There's this group of black people. There's this group of black people. So I think it's cool that they're exploring this. Every race, no matter where you're from, <clears throat> has that. Like, it'd be great to see a show of uh, Chinese people having that discussion sure. or Hispanic people. I mean, right. that exists in every uh, culture. So it's a great thing that they're exploring this, this whole division within uh, one race. Yeah, this this was uh, an incredible show. But done in a funny way. It's, yeah. it's good comedy. You make yeah. you laugh. It's not too serious. 100%. You, know, you get laugh 100%. Did funny. you get a chance to watch it? I didn't finish it, yeah. but I did watch some of it, okay. and I really liked it, too. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did also. Mm -hmm. Back when we were talking about it, and they were like, "Oh, well, Netflix pulled the trailer," and I was like, "Oh, this show is gonna be a hot mess." Yeah, yeah, yeah. remember? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I actually thought it was really funny, yeah. and uh, the the stuff about the racism within the groups mm -hmm. too um, is so cool because I don't think we've seen that on TV in yeah. in a long time. But more than not, I feel like this is a show for everybody. Like, yeah. I don't I don't think that this is directed at the, one race, and I really appreciate it. The last that. couple of Netflix shows, as far as like. A, like younger demographic mm -hmm. have knocked it out of the park. I know that the 13 reasons why I was kind of divisive, but this dear white people, if, you, if you're not watching it, it's, I think it's one, it's an important show. Mm -hmm. Kind of mm -hmm. like 13. Yeah. I think it's a very important show. I thought it was great real quick on catastrophe before I move on to highs and lows catastrophe. I think has the, some of the best chemistry on screen on television. Um, and if you're not watching catastrophe, it is the easiest binge in the world. Six episodes, six episodes, yeah. 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, kind of makes me want to move to England. Kind of doesn't. <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? And Why wouldn't you want to move to England? You should already want to move to England. Guys, yeah, guys, this just kind in. Of. David Griffin I've been wants sold to on move England, to England. England. Yeah. Yeah. I've been sold. Oh, man. That is if so good. If Platter opens up a studio, UK, go I'm moving. UK. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. So, um, guys, the episodes this week are going to be a little bit shorter since we're doing so many of them. We're going to talk a ton of TV. We're really excited. Mm. Uh, today's highs and lows are going to be very, very fast because a lot of these shows we're going to be able to talk about this week because we're talking about them the day after they air. Sinead, let's burn. All right. Better call Saul. Total high. Uh, we're seeing Gus Fring. He's yeah. back. I'm a little slow on the Jimmy McGill law mm -hmm. thing, but this episode was incredible because he does get, he does get mm -hmm. arrested. You see the inner workings. You see the, like the pa the power play, but now you're seeing the mic, the Gus, the, the, yeah. the coming to fruition. Again, this is an anxiety kind of thing where how does he turn into something? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Definitely high. high. For sure. High. All sure. right, the Americans. I know I'm the only one that is watching. Uh -huh. <laughs> Super high. Uh, uh -huh. You miss Gabriel, but it's uh, fantastic. Sinead. Outsider season finale. It's more like probably going to be the series finale because unfortunately it got canceled. But mm -hmm. such a great show. If you guys want to have a fun binge, two seasons, they're all on Hulu. It's fantastic. Awesome. Fargo. God. Not the Minnesota I grew up <laughs> I in, know. I tell you that. <laughs> okay, then. Okay, then. Okay, then. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Mm -hmm. uh, she, I cannot wait to see where her character goes yeah. this season. Why uh, don't automatic doors work for Carrie Coon's <laughs> yes, character? It's like, it's like, do you see me? Am I here? Right. Do you well, see she, me? she was having problems on the leftovers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Poor woman in yeah. electronics. Yeah, Carrie Coon's struggling. <laughs> Hi, oh, Fargo. Man. All right, Handmaid's Tale. Oh, Whoa. This is such a high for me, you guys. Uh, <laughs> this is... This is such an important piece of dystopian fiction. I love all of the stuff that they are adding in order to flesh out the series. Uh, it's I, just... said to, I said to you on Friday. <laughs> I know. And you were like, shut up. And I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> we, can, we can agree to disagree on we this. We can really agree to disagree. I, we will talk about the episode on Wednesday. I'm going to get caught up. 
just for you. But oh, you're going back. <laughs> Holzy, here's the thing. Episode three is the best it's of the first so three. Good. Episode three is the best. Breaking news, Cody. Throw. Do we have like a breaking news graphic? Do we have like a Walter Cronkite? <laughs> well, I don't have that. Like a okay. Dude, 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 dude. <laughs> I'm changing my tune of my, a rule that I've been saying since day one on the show, and it's based on Handmaid's Tale. Okay. I usually give a show three episodes, right? Uh -huh. That's yeah. what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. That's the Makuga like actual yep, law. Mm -hmm. I'm changing it. Okay. Based simply on Handmaid's Tale, and here's why. You told me that I was going to love this show. They gave me three episodes. Midway through episode two, I slammed my computer shut. And I said, why am I watching this? If it doesn't grab me by the pilot, it doesn't get three episodes. And if it oh. insults me Ooh. and punches me in the face with stupid women with hats, I'm out. <laughs> They're a product of their society, Josh. But what is the timeline? This, Where are we? It's sometime in the near future. So basically, the book Handmaid's Tale was So they go in, from hanging out smoking pot to nuns? You see in episode three how that goes down. They I, can't own property, so I, have to to, so I have to go to episode Makuga. three to no, get No, Makuga, the point is you're going back and forth between, like, obviously, like, not that long ago, things were not that different than they are right now. Women could have jobs. Women could own property. Women could have a bank account. And by episode three, they start to explain to you how society began to fall episode apart. Episode three is the best. It is the best. <sighs> Sick Fine. with it, Josh. I'll watch it, too. There you okay. go. Sinead's in. I'll Fine. watch it, too. If I'm sacrificing... Guys, it is at a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. This show is fantastic. Ooh. All right. Boom, me and Fife, I'll, like do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Also, right. speaking of shows that are at a 98%, <laughs> Riverdale. <laughs> Riverdale on a high. <laughs> Who killed Jason Blossom? Uh, is, it the, is it the snake? The snake? I don't know. I don't who think so. Who planted the gun? You know what? I don't know. I feel like, okay, we're going to find out who killed Jason Blossom, yeah. oh, yeah. right? Because when I interviewed them, they told me. So yes. I, I said, yes, okay, we're going to find out okay. second to last episode. Um, if it's not one of the main characters, I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah. Same. same. It's the same how I feel about Pretty Little Liars. If it's if one of the main people are not behind the entire mm -hmm. thing, yeah, I'm not going to care if it's some yep. person I met halfway through Yeah, because, season. I mean, we've become so invested exactly. in these characters that we've been spending all these episodes right. And with, I want to like, be heartbroken. I want to yes. be like, how could you do yes, this? You, like, yes, you want to feel betrayed by whoever exactly. it was. It would be like exactly. the rest of the week, we promise you daily TV talk and David Griffin isn't here. It's just some dude named Dave. <laughs> yeah. Unacceptable. Or Sinead shows up late every yeah. damn <laughs> every day. day. <laughs> all right, let's burn. Go. Oh, okay, so Pretty Little Liars, right? Um, all right, so there's really not much to say about the season so far. Um, basically, the girls have gotten like this board game, and that's like what's leading us to the final episode. So they have a board game. They have to play it every single day. A sends them different rules, and it's like truth or dare type of deal. So if they have to answer a question or they have to do a dare, and then they get a reward, and then that's kind of how they move. And the end, the prize of the game is to find out who's the killer, who's behind all of this for the past seven seasons. Um, right now, we got introduced to a new character, Addison. She's like the main part of the show right now. And basically, she is like the new alley at Rosewood High and basically just causing chaos for everybody. But so far, we still are not any closer to finding out who the hell killed anybody so far in the past seven <laughs> seasons. And we have like four episodes left, so I guess we'll find out, um, you know, tomorrow. Pretty <laughs> Little Liars. All right, what's next? Uh, Silicon Valley. God, this show's so good. good. Super hot. Must create new internet. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sure, yeah. Yes. Love it. <laughs> Schnee. Veep. I mean, this, we talked about uh, House of Cards briefly. I, I, I said before, I'm more of a Veep guy. I'm, I'm more of a Veep drama. Even though it's, there's 700 jokes per episode, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more of a Veep guy. Uh, I'm trying to get Sam Richardson on the show who plays uh, Richard Splett from oh, Splettnet.net. Cool. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's a good buddy. So I'm, I'm, he's, his schedule's crazy. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we'll see. All right, what's next? Genius. So good. That uh, show is genius. Jeffrey Rush and the younger actor who's playing him uh, is just, it's so good. Mm -hmm. uh, Albert Einstein, it's uh, Glazier, and you have Ron Howard directs the pilot. It's beautifully shot. It's a, it's a big production. Every it feels once like a in big a while, is like that ex-girlfriend that you dread seeing at a bar, but then you make out with. It's like they come with a show, and you're like, where has Nat Geo been? Yeah. And then they're gone, and then they, they come back. Well, you think of like, watching like wildlife shows, all of a sudden yeah. it's like, oh, yeah. we have a big series now, too. It was like yeah. when Vikings started on History Channel. Yeah. And you were like, hey, History Channel, Vikings, is this going to be like some docu-series? Nope. This <laughs> nope, is it's, it's a real series. It's a, yeah. it's a real yeah. show. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sinead, what's next? <laughs> Doctor Who. Doctor Who nice. is great. Yeah, it's so good. I, it's really nice to the last couple seasons of Doctor Who have been a little wonky and all over the place. Again, as I mentioned, I couldn't really get super on board with Clara, but I am loving this season so mm. far. Uh, it's our first uh, episode with this new companion, Bill, where we travel back in time. They go back to 1840s London uh, when the River Thames is frozen over. There's a lot of stuff with scrappy orphans. Uh, it's great. I thought it was really fun. Don't <laughs> follow the lights. Yeah, don't, don't, don't never follow, follow the lights, the lights. Under the water, yeah. <laughs> under boom, the ice. Boom. All right, we're going to go. Uh, we've got two more here. Go ahead, Sinead. Attack on Titan. Now, before I let you go on Attack on yes. Titan. Tomorrow, we'll gonna, talk about it 
at length. Emma is going to have a big segment yes. of Anime Tuesday, yes. is what we're calling it. Oh, yes. nice. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but this week, uh, I mean, you, you watched it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, surprise, surprise, uh, they've been alluding to the fact that one of the characters was somebody of great importance uh, for the past couple weeks. This week, we found out she was, and we'll talk about it more in depth tomorrow. Yeah, I'll, I'll be joining that conversation, Bang, too. Yeah. Bang, boom. <laughs> Finally, Sinead. Cable Girls. Oh, so real fast, Cable Girls yeah. is a new show that drops on Netflix. Now, there's subtitles. You have to read. There's a dubbed version, but it looks like you're watching a Godzilla movie, so don't, yeah. don't watch the dubbed version. It's about 1920s women in Madrid, lovely Spanish women, uh, and they're, they're <clears> Cable <throat> Girls. They do the, the phone things oh, with, the, with cool. the cables, yeah. and it's about their story, and it's very well done. That's it's like, cool. remember watching Good Girls Revolt? Yeah. It, different time period, obviously different country, but, but a better story. But yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't mention Gamora here on the highs and lows, but we will talk about it this back. week. Right. It's back. We'll talk about it this week. We're here every day, guys, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Mm -hmm. Shane, we got some live Twitter questions or what? Yes. All right, Beauty. so Gabriel says, what shows do you watch that you don't talk about on TV talk? <laughs> Bates Motel, Mary Kills People, and Nobodies. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Probably like every <laughs> reality show on TV. Yeah. <laughs> I got, yeah. I, there are some guilty pleasures uh, out there. I know that, like, I mean, I watch Faraday on Golf Channel. Nobody watches that show. Sure. My dad sure. likes that show. Yeah, My it's, dad likes that it's show. a golf yeah. interview show. For, so. for me, it's mostly like other anime series and uh, a lot of K-dramas, like K -dramas. Korean mm -hmm. dramas. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so David has an obsession with British, and you're K-pop. Yeah. Well, also, like we're not a sports show, so we can talk about sports. But like, I get yeah. up, like I was up at 6 a.m. watching Chelsea versus Everton, which is a huge win, three 0 So I mean, yeah. I, I like to watch sports. We talk about sports. We watch a lot of Josh. We watch a lot of sports. A ton of sports. Ton of sports. I cried yeah. sports center like three times a week. Yeah. Uh, all right, Sinead. David says live is awesome. Thanks. I'm impressed. 8 a.m. must be tough on Sinead DeFreeze. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Went on a 7 a.m. diaper run this morning, <laughs> and says, "Can we please talk about um, Griffin De shirt?" Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I was at I was at the store the other day. This is a Tommy Bahama. Tommy Bahama is you not know who cheap. Loves Tommy yeah. Bahama? But this is on sale. My dad loves John Tommy Bahama. Macuga. John Macuga. John Macuga and Tommy Bahama. <laughs> a lot of Tommy Bahama. This, this my, is like an old man shirt. As well. But they're so comfortable. It just kind of just lays on you. It's like a yoga pants for men. On your, on your and yeah, we've like really found out reason two. David Griffin is still single. Oh, Tommy Bahama. I'm kidding. Buddy. New sponsor of the show, man. Tommy Bahama. You know, I have only known one other person to wear Tommy Bahama, and it was my ex-boyfriend's dad, who I'm sure is like 65 years old. <laughs> I have one shirt. It's one shirt. Give me a break. One shirt. Next week, David comes in with a full clothing bag. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do one more, Shane. All right, Gregory says, um, my mind was blown by American Gods and Legion. Any shows of yours that is totally blown your minds on the panel. Um, most recently for me, uh, Feud was oh, yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. a showstopper. If you guys didn't watch Feud, you can go on the FX app, you can go on Hulu. Yeah. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking nominations. I'm saying if Jessica Lang does not win the Emmy, the Golden Globe, every TV award for her portrayal of Joan Crawford, it's, it will be a shock. Mm -hmm. She totally transformed. Uh, the end of that, I mean, talk about crying. I was sobbing at the end of that show. Blew my mind. I think Pretty Little Liars was a fun miniseries to watch too. That's fun. I mean, that kind of blew my mind. Big, Big Little Lies. Little Lies. <laughs> What did I say? You said Pretty Little Liars. Oh, Pretty Little Liars. I'm sorry. Wait a second. Like, <laughs> have you been watching Pretty Little Liars? <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant Big Little Lies on HBO with Nicole Kidman. That's, oh, that's worth God. Out. Yeah. I almost fell in love with yeah, you. I was like, wait. <laughs> Night of. Night of kind Night of blew my mind, too. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to, there's like, there is something that is in my, like the back of my brain that's trying to come out and I just cannot remember what it was because I'm so still fixated on like how much I loved Legion. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Because again, it was like that, that was a situation of like going into a show being like, Okay, well, you know, the 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 stuff on TV that you, well, well basically all of the X-Men stuff has been a little like meh lately, but mm -hmm. then you get Legion and you're like, okay, this is yeah. this is what it's yeah. totally, totally. All right, uh that's it. Twitter question. That's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that is all. That's, what, uh, that's, all that's what they call a transition in the business. <laughs> yeah. and I knocked that out of the park. All right, Sinead, this is how we're doing end credits. You pick the MVP of the episode today. Who do you think had the best performance of the three of us? <laughs> what? We, yep. And we that's get, how we're doing this? Yes. And, uh, just we for get today. Third, just for today. In the next couple of days, it'll, there's like actual uh, uh, you know, Wait, stakes, I have to pick. But, I have to pick who and, performed And they the get best? 30 seconds end credits. They get 30 seconds to talk about whatever they want on television. You don't have to pick me, but you okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna give it to Emma. All right. Oh, nice. I really liked your views on um, American Gods. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank so you very much. And she girl. read the book. I did read the book. Uh, also, so I'm gonna use my 30 seconds then to talk about K dramas because <laughs> I just mentioned that that is what I mostly watch that I do not talk about here on TV Talk. Uh, the one I am currently watching is a historical drama called Huarong or Huarong, the Poet Warrior Youth. Whoa. It is based on an actual uh, group of, of people in the very early days of uh, South Korea 
Korea. This is back when it was still uh, three different kingdoms. I guess actually just Korea in general. But uh, the actual premise mm. of the show uh, is magical. Basically, they're like, Ten seconds. we're going to ha- gather all of the hot rich guys in town and turn them into a fancy army. Uh, and that's that's uh, that's the premise of the show. Hot guys, fancy army. <laughs> yep. Very few words that have ever been put together in one thing. Emma Fife wins <laughs> end credits today. Guys. That's our first daily TV talk live here on Collider. We are here every day this week, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 Eastern, for GMT. Uh, we found out what that means. Thank you. James Madison's own Woo. Emma Fife. Uh, before we get out of here, where can the good people find me on the internet? Sinead DeFries. I'm online at Sinead DeFries and at that, so Sinead.com. And I'll be here every day this week. You're crushing it. <laughs> Tommy Bahama, where can they find you? <laughs> you know, I mean, this is this is a nice shirt. I'm comfy right now. So <laughs> wear that I'm every getting another day. Tommy Bahama <laughs> shirt, and I'm going to be here every day. Also be on <laughs> Heroes this week. I think I'm on Movie Talk on Friday. So I'm going to be around. Just, just look for me here on Cloudy Video. I'm around at Griffin D. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Emma Fife. <laughs> I'm at Emma Fife, Twitter and Instagram. I will be here tomorrow and Friday this week yes. talking about all the TV stuff. Also be sure to catch me weekly on the Movie Trivia Schmodown, doing the post-game interviews. It's a great time, and I, you'll find me on Collider Video, much yeah. like most of the people here. <laughs> this week, guys, we're here again every single day. We're going to take Twitter questions. Come, we got all kinds of fun things planned. Stay tuned. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga, Twitter, Instagram, The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.